So welcome to this talk on installing the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as an identity provider. My name is Kevin Jones. So in a previous talk, we implemented the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML component as a service provider. And we said that to use that, we needed some identity provider. And in this talk, we'll implement that identity provider. And we'll implement that as part of identity server. So to create a SAML identity provider, we're going to use Identity Server. So I need to create an instance of Identity Server. So to do that, we are going to use the Duende templates. You can install these templates by calling .NET new install, and then passing the identifier duende.identityserver.templates. Now, I have these installed already, but if I run this command again, it shows me the set of templates that are installed. And for this example, we're going to use an in-memory version of Identity Server. So to create a project from that template, I use .NET new IS in-mem, and that creates the project for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this project into the solution we used for the service provider. So inside JetBrains Rider, this is the solution we use for the service provider. So in here, if I right-click and do Add Existing Project, then this is the identity provider project we just created. So this comes as a basic installation of Identity Server, and I want to add SAML 2P to it. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that we're running on .NET 7 here. So if I bring up the properties for my identity provider project and change that to .NET 7, I then want to make sure all of my packages are up to date. So in the NuGet window, click on Update to update everything. And then I'm going to add the RSK SAML package to this project. OK, now we're good to go, and we can update the code. So in my Identity Provider project, there's a file called hostingextensions.cs. And this is the code that's used to configure all the services we need for Identity Server. So in here, the first thing I want to do is to configure SAML. So to do that here, I call add SAML plugin. And that plugin takes some options that allow me to configure SAML. Again, we specify our license information. So I have my licensee. And again, that's going to be demo. And again, we specify the license key. And again, just to emphasize here, you can get that license key from identityserver.com, products, SAML2P, if you fill in this form, we will email you a demo license key that lasts for a month. And that's what I'm going to use here. So that's my license key set up. And I'm then going to set one more value, which is just a turn off signing of my authentication requests. We just set this value to false. So we also need to provide a service provider configuration. And this is the information about the service provider that's going to connect to this identity provider. And the classes for this are in the Rock Solid Knowledge SAML package. In this demo, we're using in-memory data. So I'll create an in-memory service provider for this, but normally this is information you'd add to your database. So here we have a file called config.cs. And in config.cs, I need to create another collection. So again, this will be a public, static, IE enumerable. But now this will be an IE enumerable of service provider. Now be careful here. You want the one from the rsk.saml.models namespace. So we'll call this service providers. And we'll create a new collection of service providers. So inside here, I do new service provider. And then here, I can configure our service provider. And this will have two values. It will have an entity ID. And this is used to name the service provider in the IDP in this code. And then we use this name in the service provider itself. And we saw in the previous talk, we called it RSK SAML. Now, I also need to give this the endpoint to connect back to. So in here, we set something called the Assertion Consumer Services. Into this, we pass a new service. And to this, 
we tell it how we're going to bind to our service provider. And in our case, we're going to use an HTTP POST request. So for that, we use SAML constants. And again, from the RSK SAML package, dot binding types, dot HTTP POST. And then we also pass in the address of the callback endpoint on our service provider. And if you see the talk on setting up the service provider, that service was listening on HTTPS, localhost 5002, and the endpoint was sign in saml Once I create this service provider's collection here, I can then add that to my services. So back in hosting extensions.cs, we can carry on configure our services by calling add in memory service providers and passing it that collection, which is just config.serviceproviders. So we need to add one more piece of configuration and then we're good to go. We need to add a client. So to do that, we'll do new client and this will be our SP client, the client we created in the other talk. So inside here, we specify the client ID and we call this thing RSK SAML. And that name we specify here for the client ID must match the entity ID in the service provider we just created. In here, we can give this a name and this is any descriptive name that we want to pass to here. So let's call this RSK SAML example. We specify a protocol type, and that's going to be SAML2P. So we have identity server constants dot protocol types dot SAML2P. And then we specify the scopes that this client is allowed to access. So we have allowed scopes, and this is a collection of strings, and we'll have open ID and profile. Okay, once we have that, we need to do a couple more things. So after we call use authorization here, we want to tell identity server to use the SAML plugin. So we call app.useIdentityServer SAML plugin. And then I want to make sure this is running on the right port. So our service provider expects our identity provider to be running on port 5001. And indeed, that's the default that's been set up from the template. So now we should be good to go. So if I run my IDP, first of all, and that's running on port 5001, and we can see there the Duende Identity Server welcome page. And then from here, I can run my service provider. Again, I've opened this in an incognito window, and it's listening on port 5002. And we have this authorized endpoint, which is home slash details. If I hit this endpoint, it takes me off and asks me to authenticate. So this is now using our IDP to authenticate because we're using the in-memory version of identity server here. We have some user set up, one called Alice with a password of Alice. And if I click on login, sure enough, that takes me off to the endpoint and we can list the claims. So we've now seen how to set up the SAML component, both as an SP and as an IDP. So just to recap, to set this up as an IDP in Identity Server, you need to call the add SAML plugin, setting things like the license key. You have to make sure you have a service provider con configured and a client configured. And then you have to call use Identity Server SAML plugin to get this thing into the pipeline. I hope you've enjoyed these two talks and found them useful.